Uh, let's get started. Uh, before we continue, are there any questions about anything we did last week or any of the previous weeks? Okay, uh, in that case, we'll get started here. Uh, today we are uh, discussing or demonstrating, whatever you want to call it, uh, distributing your survey. Because of course, why do all this work that we've done over the, what, the past six weeks or so, uh, if you're not actually going to send your survey out to anyone? Um, there are essentially two basic ways of sending out your survey that most people, the vast majority will use. One is using an anonymous link, which is uh, what it sounds like. It's just a link that you can put on a web page, an email, or you know any number of places. Um, it does not track uh, individual information. Uh, the other, except for latitude and longitude, and of course, IP address. And uh, as we know, IP address is considered personally identifiable information. We'll talk more about that. Um, and the other uh, common method of distributing your survey is using what has been called over the years a panel, a contact list, and are now called directories. You'll see each of those uh, three different terms throughout in different places. Uh, in Qualtrics, it all refers to the same thing. Before you do actually distribute your survey, uh, you wanna take a look at a couple of things. And one thing I wanna remind you about because this will come up in a couple of moments is uh, we talked about this in the very first class is going over to account settings and making sure that your time zone is set correctly and uh, your user email defaults. You can, this is, as it says, a default. You can change it uh, when you need to, but this just makes it easier. Uh, as you can see, I use research data services with all of this, even though I, me, am Paul Berg. Uh, so the, that, those are a couple of things that you want to make sure that are set uh, right from the start. I'll go back to our project. I'm just using the one from, uh, what, last week, survey flow, because the actual survey itself uh, in, for this class is not all that important. Um, the other thing that you want to do is come over to survey options. And this is where, you know, the display name, this is what comes up in the, uh, in the web browser tab here, uh, the description. Those are all uh, part of accessibility. Uh, whether you want question numbers on or off, uh, again, that's an accessibility thing. Accessibility says yes, turn the question numbers on. But if you're doing skip and display logic and especially randomizing the questions, that's gonna throw the question numbering off. So it's a it's a, a judgment call on your part. Really, in terms of distribution, is uh, the responses uh, what to do with incomplete responses and how long you want to give people to complete them. Survey availability is set a specific start and expiration date. People will not be able to start taking the survey until this time. And once the expiration is done, that's when uh, they can't take it anymore. They'll get an error message if they try to get into it. And as you can see, it says zone 
the time zone is important. And you can just set it, you know, edit it to whatever you want. And they tell you again. They used to not tell you this at all. And I did have people who had uh, their uh, their time zone set to, you know, like California and it's really messing things up for them. Inactive survey messages. Um, how people get to the survey. Bot detection, usually you want to Turn that on. Um, anonymized responses. It says don't record respondents' IP address, location data, and contact info. That contact info is going to come from uh, your directory, which is also a contact list, which is also a panel. Um, and this is useful. Um, particularly if you are using, distributing your survey using a directory, but you don't want any of that information attached to the data, uh, Qualtrics will by default attach all of that to the data, to all the, their answers. So you have the person's name uh, in the same line as all of their answers. And you often don't want that. Um, but even if you are doing an anonymous survey using an anonymous link, it will still record the IP address. So if you need absolute positive 100% anonymity, then you'll need to want it to turn on anonymized responses. I'm going to keep it off for now so that we can see uh, what happens uh, a little bit later. And of course, there's post survey, sending a thank you message, et cetera, email, email triggers and contactless triggers. Um, these are still here because uh, many companies have been using these over the years and they don't want to have to switch to using workflows, which is what uh, Qualtrics recommends you use now instead of these triggers, you use the workflows. Uh, Salesforce, you don't need to worry about that unless you have access to Salesforce, which uh, probably 99% of the people at SU do not. Are there any questions about that? I know I went through that pretty quickly, but these are all things that we've looked at before. Of course, the other thing you want to do before you uh, send out your survey is check the accessibility. Um, you can do that under tools and review. And pretty much check survey accessibility, analyze survey, and this expert review thing are all the same thing. It's just that check survey goes directly to a certain section in the expert review. And what's nice is it tells you, oh, there's something here that's not accessible. And you can click here, it'll tell you what question it is. And if you click on here, it will bring you right to the question. So that makes your life a lot easier in finding this kind of stuff. Um, the other way to get to that is click there. And you see optimized questions for mobile. And it'll tell you if it's minor, severe, whatever. Um, you have to take all of these uh, with a little grain of salt because sometimes it'll say, oh, you have too many text entry questions. Well, it's I think the that kicks off if you have like four or more. But if you're asking people for their first name, their last name, their email, their phone number, their address and a few other things, you're immediately going to hit that. Um, so, you know, as I say, you know, think about what they say. These are suggestions. 
suggestion. <laughs> Display logic, it says, you know, all of this kind of stuff, it's all passed. That's all good. The other thing that you can do um, before you uh, actually distribute, and we'll talk about this a bit more next week, is generating test responses. I think we did this a little bit last week too, is you can generate dummy responses to your survey. And that's good for testing the uh, any kind of randomization because you can generate the test responses then download the data and click that little box that we talked about um, and look at how things have uh, been randomized. I'm not going to generate this right now because we don't really need it. Um, and of course, there's always preview. Um, you should have been doing this a million times throughout developing your survey. Um, what's nice too, I think I mentioned this, is you can always share the preview with other people. Just send them the link and then they can try your survey and give you feedback on it without having to uh, actually collaborate with them, give them edit access to your survey. There we go. The other thing about generating the, uh, the test responses is you can, as I say, you download that data. You can then use that data to start writing your SPSS, your R, or whatever other uh, program you're going to use uh, to analyze your data. Start writing those programs as your survey is being distributed and people are answering the questions. It just gives you a, a little bit of a head start. So you, you know, write all the, the code to do your uh, data cleaning, all your uh, descriptive statistics, et cetera. And then once you have your actual data, all you have to do is download that and then just change the file name in your program and run it and boom, you're that, you're that much further ahead. You don't need to sit around and wait to get all of your data before you start uh, uh, writing your programs, if that's how you're going to uh, do it. But you know, even if you're gonna do it in Excel or uh, Tableau or anything else, uh, you can download that dummy data and just look and see how you want to do it once you've got the real data. Uh, you have to make sure that you delete all that test data and everything uh, before you distribute. But even that's not the end of the world. Because as we'll see, um, Qualtrics has a variable, a column, that tells you, was this a preview? Was this generated? Was this... Uh, from an anonymous link, was it from email? And so then you can just go in and delete everything that was a test response. Just makes it easier to uh, get rid of it all before you actually send it out. And of course, uh, as we've said a few times, if you're doing any kind of randomization, you want to go into those places and reset all counts back to zero. Any questions so far? Okay, now let's get into actually sending out your survey. Um, of course, you want to publish. It gives you all this stuff. Publish. 
I think you can come over here to distributions. And you see over here on this side, there's anonymous link, emails, personal links, SMS, social media, offline, QR codes. Um, personal links, this is, you probably won't use it, but it's a way of generating a personal link, a link for each person in a directory. If you want to use your own mailing program, you don't want to use Qualtrics Mailer. This will give you a, an individual link to use in a mail merge in another program. You can send out an SMS text message, um, links for various social media, offline apps if person the offline app is good if you're going out and doing uh, interviews in the field and you're going to interview the person and fill out the the uh, the survey yourself as you're speaking to them and uh, you don't have an internet connection you know you're in a rural part of the country and then, of course, QR codes. We all know what QR codes. Uh, as it says, this distribution type cannot track identifying information. Basically, it's another way of doing an anonymous link. So let's look at anonymous link. And that's exactly what it is. You copy the survey link. It says it's copied. And now you can... Uh, Put this into any kind of an email, put it on a web page. Uh, it is just a link. I'll come up here and paste it in. And it takes you to the survey. Uh, this cannot be used to track uh, who is answering your survey? Um, it, but as I say, it will record the IP address and the latitude and longitude. An IP address is considered identifying information. So if you absolutely can't have that information, then you have to go back um, to the survey options and turn off that. Uh, 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 don't collect uh, identifying information button. Okay, so that that's that's an easy one. Um, what we're going to talk about right now are uh, directories, which are also contact lists, which are also panels. Uh, because you need those to do the email distribution. So we'll come up here and we'll go to directories. And you can see I have a whole bunch here. Um, I recommend creating a directory with just your own email in there for testing purposes. Um, every survey is um, independent of every directory. So you can use any directory with any survey. And so as you're doing uh, various testing, it's nice to be able to test this email uh, by just sending it to yourself. As you can see, I have my, my Syracuse uh, address and a Gmail, something outside of Syracuse University, just to make sure that there aren't any weird things that might be going on. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, maybe the mail filters, uh, mail filters on Outlook here are can be a little wonky.
go back here. And there's two main ways of creating a contact list or a directory. As you can see here, it's still called lists, even though up here it's directory. Um, you just give it a name. And can do it by either manually entering the information, their email. At minimum, you have to have the email, which makes sense because this is what it's for is to email the survey link to people. Uh, if you have their phone number and you want to put it in, you can. First name and last name are good to have. Uh, because as we've seen in various places, when you use piped text um, or even the embedded data in the survey flow, you can pull this information from the directory. So at the top of your survey, you can say, you know, dear John, you know, here, you know, please do our survey. External data reference, that's a holdover from the very earliest days of Qualtrics. And you have to have this column in here, though you don't have to have any information in there. Language can be blank as well. You can add columns. It says embedded data one, you can call that, you know, let's say class. Or, uh, if you have that information. Now, you know, in the survey, as we saw with the pipe text, you can pull this information. You can say, John, since you've been at the Maxwell School for the last three years, what do you think about, etc." So this isn't so bad if, you know, depending on where you're getting your information is from, and you don't have 500 of them. If you do have 500 of them, then you're probably going to want to upload a file. And it needs to be a in a certain format, and it needs to be a CSV. As it says, download a sample template. Can you see this uh, Excel sheet? Yes, no, maybe, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, as you can see, it has pretty much the same columns that the manual entry, just in, in a slightly different order. First name, last name, email, the external data reference. And then just for uh, example, they put in these other columns. What you do need to upload at minimum, as I mentioned before, is at least the email, but you have to have first name, last name, email, external data reference uh, in the headers. So pretty much as you see here. So we can go here, select a file. And it will look at the file and make sure that it's in the correct format. And if it says your file looks good, now select next, select next. And you can look at the fields uh, to be imported. And then upload the file. And it could take a couple of minutes, um, you know, especially if you have hundreds in here.
It says preparing import. And it goes along. See, it hasn't uploaded everything yet. So let's take a look here. Um, if you click on one of them, you'll see you get the information, a lot of information over here. If there's embedded data, you can add it here as well. Um, if you click on any of these, now you can go in and edit the whole thing. Makes your life a lot, a little bit easier. Uh, it will tell you what lists this person is a member of. And you know how many uh, times they've been invited, and to uh, fill out a survey and how many surveys they've done it, and what the response rate is. Uh, this is this kind of information is good for you know companies that have a lot of people and send out a lot of surveys on um, things. Um, edit view the history, delete the contact, et cetera. There's list options. You can export them to a CSV. Uh, what's good is merge duplicate contacts. You can create a sample from a list. So if you have hundreds and you just want to say, uh, Pick say 50 out of a thousand, you can do that. And it will create another uh, uh, another list that you can use as you know, like a regular directory. Rename it, delete it, all that kind of thing. Uh, add contacts is again, you can upload another file or do the manual input. Let's see, did that other one finally? Yep, yeah, here we go. Finally added everything. And you see it has all that information. Opted in and opted out is, um, as you can see, everybody's opted in by default. But if somebody clicks uh, that little link that you, I'm sure you've all seen that's, you know, uh, unsubscribe, don't send me any more of these things. If they click on that, then this will be changed to opted out. And by default, when you send, when you do a distribution with this list, that person will automatically not get the distribution. Uh, so it makes maintaining things a little bit easier. You know that they're there, um, but they're not gonna get bothered again. Any questions about directories, which are also contact lists, which are also panels? Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll go back here, back to distributions, And we'll do the email. Let's compose email here and compose email here. It says get an email summary of messages sent, failed, and bounced every Tuesday. Why they pick Tuesday, I don't know. But if you have a lot of, if you have, you know, ongoing surveys, that might be useful. <clears throat> Uh, you'll see in a moment, you'll be able to get this information just by coming in to this page. So we'll do compose email. And here's where you can select your contact list. As I say, it's nice to have a list of just yourself. 
and you can even just send it to you know any one single address or the entire one. Uh, from all of this is filled in by default, and that's the default on the accounts thing. But you can change it if you need to change it for this particular distribution. Uh, when to send it? An hour custom or send it right now, which is good if you're testing this. You don't want to wait an hour. Send it right away. Uh, subject. Uh, it Subject can be anything, and you can even, you know, get... Uh, uh, saved subjects, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> um, you can even uh, have messages, default messages that you've already uh, created and load that in here. We've seen some of these before uh, in when we're uh, creating questions, insert survey link, type text you can use even in the email. But this is where you and down here it says, you know, follow this link to the survey and this will be um, a link that says take the survey. I'm going to show this in a moment. Uh, and then, or copy and paste the URL. You've seen these things. And then the opt out. Click here to unsubscribe. One thing is it won't send it without a subject line. You have to have a subject line in there. I want to show you, and I don't know why they call it advanced options and kind of hide it down here, because these have been known to uh, trip people up. By default, you see it's the individual link. That means everybody gets their very own link to the survey, and that's how Qualtrics tracks each person. By default, that link will expire in 60 days. Now, most of the time, that's fine. Uh, sometimes it's not. You want to give people uh, as much time as they want. So you need to change this. Uh, it expires in 60, 90, and of course, a custom date, however you want to do it. You know, and you can also do expires in one day, expires in a week. Etc. You can also send a link that allows people to fill the survey out more than once. By default, once a person clicks that last submit button, they're not allowed to come back and do it over again. But sometimes you want to let people do it as many times as they need to. That's when you want to use the multi multiple completes. The anonymous, as it says, reminder and thank you message are not compatible. This link type will not track identifying information of respondents, except for latitude, longitude, and in particular, IP address. So this is a way of sending, basically sending an anonymous link to everybody in your directory, in your contact list. Go back to individual. It's going to click send now. And you can see it has this distribution. It says in progress, you show details. Once it actually sends things out, this will update.
So as you can see, it says two emails sent, zero, zero, zero. None failed. Nobody started the survey yet. Nobody's finished it yet. Nothing bounced, no duplicates. And very nicely, no complaints. I'm just waiting. Ah, here it is. Okay, and so here is what the person will see. You can take the survey. It's the same link that goes here. And you get to your survey. Now, one thing is when you're testing this, you might need to do this, you know, a couple, a few times. In between each test, you need to come in and delete the distribution. Because if I had actually filled out that survey and then, uh, you know, submitted it, and then I went to try and test that email again, Qualtrics would say, oh, that person already filled it out, so we're not going to send them another email. And so you're sitting here waiting and waiting for that email and wondering what's going on. So in between each test of uh, the distribution, you need to delete the distribution. And now Qualtrics thinks you're, you're starting fresh and it will send the email out again. So you can do some neat stuff. You can insert the survey link. But it's it's basically what's here anyhow. Inline email questions, so you can um, start them off. Sometimes starting off, but you've probably gotten emails, uh, you know, especially if they're asking your feedback on something, uh, you know, a movie, a dinner, or whatever. Um, and you click on it and then that takes you to the survey. Yes, you know, and we've seen the pipe test stuff. Contact field, as we talked about. And, you know, various editing kinds of things that are you know, standard. Getting a little bit into next week, but that's okay. Just wanna show you what some of the data look like. Um, so you have the start date. I tells you how the person, uh, how it was uh, distributed, survey preview, IP address, IP address. Since it's a preview, it didn't bother taking the IP address. Uh, the progress on it, how long it took to uh, fill it out, whether or not they finished it, the date that it was recorded, uh, the response ID, which is unique for everybody. Um, name and email, these two as says distribution channel, anonymous link, anonymous link, email, email, and preview. 
So as I mentioned, you know, before you distribute one, get rid of all the test data and everything that's in here. It's not the end of the world if you don't, because you can always identify any preview or uh, test things, uh, things that you did with the generate test response uh, previously. Okay, I think that about does it. Um, are there any questions? Okay, yeah, this was probably one of the easier things you'll, you'll do in, in Qualtrics. Um, Let's see, next week is Thanksgiving, so we will not be here. The week after, uh, November 30th, will be our last class, and that's when we'll be doing uh, the, your data and reporting, uh, very basic reporting in uh, Qualtrics. Okay, so if there are no other questions. Hi, Paul, I did, I did want to ask something. Sure. Um, okay. I was curious when you were showing us how um, the distribution can be scheduled in the future. So is it within that time span you can go in and cancel it, presumably also, if it's scheduled for the future? Yes, you can. Okay, thanks. Any, uh... can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I also had a question, which isn't explicitly related to the distributions, but that's okay. Um, when you're finalizing a survey, is there a way to view, like, to get an export of the question text? Like, if you're finalizing it and you want someone to be able to see what all the questions are before they start filling out, like a complicated survey with lots of branches, just so people know what to expect when they see the survey. There's a couple of things you can do. Um, one is with the preview, you can do share preview and copy the link and send that to them. The other thing that you can do, and I have a feeling this is more what you're thinking of, is under tools, you can go to import export and then export survey to Word. Ah, uh, yes. That's, and then that's what you can uh, click all this stuff if you want. You know, you can decide which ones uh, you do or don't want to send to the person. And then click export. This okay. is also for, good for, for documenting uh, your survey. I'm just going to bring that over so you can see it. Um, you know, if you are working on a grant and you're required to share your data, you have to share your, your uh, metadata as well. So a copy of the survey. Um, as you can see, this has all the survey flow stuff in it. And then it gets into the actual questions. Um, you would need to uh, share this as well so that people uh, who want to use your data can see how you actually uh, ask the questions. Another thing to do uh, before you actually send it out is uh, export the survey itself. And this uh, exports it, as it says, you can see here, QSF. Um, and that is your whole survey, all of the questions, the survey flow, the whole bit in one file. Um, and then you, you could even email that file to a friend and they can uh, import it back into uh, Qualtrics and boom, 
their the survey is there already uh, created for them. It's an easy way of getting your survey from Syracuse University to whatever other institution you might go to from here if you want to take it with you. Uh, that's one thing. If you just have a couple of surveys, uh, doing the, the export thing with the survey itself and the data and just like emailing it or putting on a thumb drive or something, uh, that's the easiest thing. If you have a whole bunch, as soon as you know where you're going, hopefully they have Qualtrics. If they don't, you're, you're dead in the water. Uh, contact Qualtrics and let them know. And then they can help you transfer all of that uh, without having to download and you know export and the whole bit. Okay, anything else? Doesn't even have to be about distributions. Okay then, uh, I hope everybody has a nice Thanksgiving break if that's your thing. Uh, and otherwise, I we will all be back here on Thursday, November 30th at three o'clock and for our final class. All right, take care everybody. <laughs>